Hi hey guys, this is NDPHT Guy one In this video, I'll be talking about the Lambert W function. Uh, this is one of those mathematical functions that appears all over the place in remote areas of physics and even in biochemistry. And I also noticed that very few other people have a decent YouTube video about this, this topic, so I figured I'd make one myself. So what exactly is this Lambert W function? So let's think about the equation x times e to the x equals y. And x and y are just two plain old numbers. So an equation of this form could look something like x times e to the x equals 2, or 2 times e squared equals y, something like that. So if I give you a value of x, could you calculate a value for y? That sounds pretty obvious, right? If I give you x equals 2, all you have to do to find y is do 2 times e squared equals y, or whatever that is. Just plug it into a calculator, right? But what if I reverse it? So suppose I give you a y, let's say y equals 2. Could you find the x? that produces that value? That is, could you find the x such that when you multiply x times e to the x, that it gives you 2? So this whole question of trying to reverse this process of finding an x from a y uh, is basically the whole motivation behind the Lambert W function. So let's abstract this process a little. So I said in the first statement that if I give you an x, could you find a y? And that, that's a pretty easy question, right? So let's say I have some x that I've just given to you. And let me call the process f, the process of taking that number itself, x, and multiplying it times e to the x. So that process f is going to produce a y value for any given x. And again, I'll call that, value, that uh, function f. So the function I'm interested in really is the f inverse, or I should really say at this point the relation f inverse. That is, if I give you a value of y, can you tell me what value of x is associated with that? Just to repeat, if I give you y equals 2, can you find me that x such that x times e to the x equals 2? Conceptually, this is really all that's going on here. So what I'm going to do is call this f inverse the Lambert W function. So it's going to be this relation f inverse, which inputs y and outputs x. And I'll give that the symbol w. So x is going to be equal to w of y. So as we said before, x times e to the x is going to be equal to y. So this relation, f, the forward process, is where I give you some value of x, and you tell me what value of y is associated with that. So x times e to the x is going to be equal to y. And the backward process is I give you some y, and then you apply the operation w upon that to give me some value of x that's associated with that. So this is the way we're going to set up the function w. So we're going to set it up such that w of y times e to the w of y is equal to y. And to see why this is true, all you have to do is look at the second line here, x equals w of y, and just plug that into the first line. So I'm just making that substitution. So w of y equal times e to the w of y is equal to y itself. So this statement is going to pretty much serve as the definition of the Lambert W function. Now another way to make the substitution is to see that y is equal to x times e to the x, and then just plug that into the second line here for y. And when you do that, you find that x is just equal to w of x times e to the x, which makes sense, right? Because x times e to the x is the forward operation. And then w is going to undo that operation. So when you do that whole process, you just get x out of that. Now to see kind of what's going on here, well, let's, let's do a numerical example. So suppose we have the equation x times e to the x equals 1. So this is going to be the forward process. Uh, I give you some value of x. You apply the operation x times e to the x to get 1. So what's the reverse operation? Well, that's going to be, I give you 1, and you tell me what x is associated with that. So I can write this equation, x equals w of 1. And it turns out this value gets its own special name called the omega constant. And that's denoted by the uppercase omega here. So if you ever see the symbol omega used in this context of the Lambert W function, then this will just kind of remind you that uh, omega is just equal to w of 1. So what that tells us is that if we turn around and take this number omega, plug into the equation x times e to the x, then that means that omega times e to the omega has got to be equal to 1. So, so far we've talked about this Lambert W function in the abstract sense, but how would you actually calculate with this function? For example, how would you find W of 1, which we said was equal to omega, or more generally W of y, where y is some number? So one way to do uh, calculations with this function is to use Newton's method which I uh, hope you know that this is a method associated with finding roots of equations. 
So consider that equation that we're dealing with before, x times e to the x equals 1. Now instead of interpreting it like that, let's move the 1 to the other side. So we now have x times e to the x minus 1 equals 0. So the way to find that constant omega would be just to interpret this as a function, that is, interpret x times e to the x minus 1 as a function, and then just find the root of that function. So this is the sort of question that Newton's method could deal with quite easily. So here I have the formula for Newton's method. And remember, this is a recursive operation, so I have the, the next number is equal to the previous number minus this ratio of the function of that previous number to its derivative. And I also know that this function f that I'm dealing with, uh, the derivative is easy to calculate, right? So I have f prime is just equal to the quantity x plus 1 times e to the x. And that's just basic calculus to find that. So I then substitute everything into Newton's method, the equation for Newton's method. And all I did here is I plugged in, for the original function, f of x sub n. I just plug in x times e to the x minus 1 into the numerator here. And then the denominator, just plug in the formula that we just obtained for f prime. So here's the formula we just set up one more time. So with this being a recursive operation, I need somewhere to start. That is, I need to guess some value for x0. So what would be a logical guess for x0? Well, I know that the, the number I'm looking for, omega, is going to be omega times e to the omega, and that, that should be equal to 1. And I also know that if I instead substitute the number 0 into the equation, so I get 0 times e to the 0, that's just going to give me 0. So that means uh, omega's got to be greater than 0 if that wasn't obvious already. And if I substitute the number 1 into that equation, I just get 1 times e to the 1, which is equal to e, which is, well, you guys know what e is. So that's not equal to 1. So that means that omega has got to be between 0 and 1. So a logical guess might be, let's let x0 be equal to 1 half. So if you do that calculation, just let x0 equal 0.5, plug into the equation, and just do that recursive operation over and over again. You get this for the calculations, and this converges pretty quickly to 0.5671. And of course, this number is going to continue on and on forever, so this is the four decimal approximation to this. So omega is going to be about 0.5671. So to actually check this, let's do that operation, that x times e to the x operation. So if this is right, then 0.5671 times e to the 0.5671 should be pretty close to 1. And it turns out that it is, at least four decimal places. So that's the four decimal place approximation to omega. And if you're hungry for more digits, uh, it's given below 0.5671432904 to 10 decimal places. So we were able to calculate w of 1, which was the omega constant. But how about the more general question? How would you calculate w of y, where y is just some number? So you do a very similar process using Newton's method. So we have x times e to the x equals y. Again, move that y to the left-hand side. So we have x times e to the x minus y is equal to 0. And then just interpret this as some function, f of x equals x times e to the x minus y. And we're just going to find the root of that, just like we did before with Newton's method. So now we just apply that. So the derivative is going to be unchanged just because we had this f of x and we're just shifting up by some unit uh, y, so it's not going to change any of the slopes. So the derivative is, is the same. And then you just plug this into Newton's method and you get the formula uh, below. So just by way of review of what we've talked about so far, so if we have an equation that looks like this, uh, x times e to the x equals 5, or just some number, x times e to the x equals some number, the way we can solve for x is just to invert this whole process of doing x times e to the x. So we can say that this value x is equal to w of 5. And then you just do that calculation somehow. In fact, MATLAB knows how to do this calculation, so this is a pretty well-known calculation for a lot of uh, programs. And it turns out this w of 5 is going to be equal to 1.3267. And of course, when you do the, the other operation, x times e to the x, that should give you 5, the thing you've, you started with. So I thought I'd wrap up this video by sharing a few of the cool properties of the Lambert W function. And in fact, we basically saw two of them already. The first was that x is equal to W of x times e to the x. And this just comes from that inverting property of the W function, that if you do that forward operation, x times e to the x, the way you undo it is by applying W. 
So when you combine those two operations, you just get what you started with, which is x. So from that very basic property of the w function, we can immediately see that this implies that when we substitute x equals 0 into that, that equation, that we get 0 is equal to w of 0 times e to the 0, which is just w of 0. So we get that property that w of 0 is just equal to 0. Now instead of substituting x equals 0, I could substitute x equals 1. And you see that on the left-hand side, I just get 1, which is then equal to w of 1 times e to the 1, which is just e. So the next property I have listed as property number 3 is that w of e is just equal to 1. And if you play around with the definition of the Lambert w function a little bit more, it's not too difficult to show that the derivative at 0 is equal to 1. And also, that's, it's a solution to the ODE, y prime equals y divided by x times 1 plus y. Now, the last property I'll share with you guys is a uh, pretty mysterious property, at least in my opinion. Uh, if you take a number x, and if you exponentiate that with the same base x, so you do x to the x, and you take that thing, x to the x, and then exponentiate one more time with x as the base, and you keep repeating the operation, which, uh, if you're wondering, is called tetration. It's kind of the extension of exponentiation. That if you pick an x where that quantity converges, the number that it converges to is given precisely by this formula. Negative w of negative ln x divided by ln x is that number that it converges to. And like I said in the beginning of the video, uh, this is one of those functions uh, that appears in just a lot of unexpected places in math and physics. And uh, it, it even has a... Uh, Kind of a strange application to Michaelis Munson kinetics, and it kind of forms a closed form solution that is the exact solution to the kinetics equation in that, in that sense. So uh, that wraps up this video. Uh, if you liked it, give it a, give it a thumbs up. Um, if you don't, give it a thumbs down. Uh, tell me what you think of it in the comments section. Thank you.